this is, I believe, is a very common. Well, this this is called myth busting, so I'm not giving anything away to say this is a myth. Um, there is no specific age under which you need to have parental consent. If I guess what it what a counsellor needs to do is to assess with any young person, anyone under the age of eighteen, whether that young person is um, mature enough to be able to understand of accessing counselling without parental consent. Oh, and this Sue, thing, you just broke up just for a second there. Could you oh, okay. could you say something about understand? Yeah, yeah. Um, whether a young person is, is mature enough and able to understand the implications of accessing counselling without parental consent. So that's what the counsellor needs to assess. And, you know, someone of the age of 16, perhaps if they have some learning difficulties, may not be able to fully understand the implications. Someone of the age of 10 may be able to. So it, it's not quite as clear as, and, and I was reading something recently um, about, I think it might have been in the, um, the BACP's divisional journal for this month, somebody writing about school counselling and about that kind of way of working that seems to have arisen, which seems to be that for prime, children in primary school, parental consent will be sought. For children in secondary school, parental consent won't be sought. And quite often that might be accurate because a lot of children of secondary school age would be able to make that decision. And a lot of children of primary school age might struggle. But it's not quite that simple in terms of, of case law. Um, the idea of Gillick competence is about the counsellor needing to assess on a case-by-case -case basis whether a young person is mature enough to access counselling without consent. So that might need quite a bit of discussion. You'll get a sense of the child in the room, perhaps in a first session, but maybe just checking out. Do your parents know? What's that like that they do know or that they don't know? And if they don't know, what would it be like if they did? And if you don't want them to know, why is that? And how might it be if they accidentally found out then, if you're not going to tell them and, you know, somebody slips up somewhere and then they find out, what would that be like? And, yeah, so a um, bit of work for the counsellor to do there rather than a rule.